Hey everyone, today we're going to be making this render, um, and it's pretty cool, it's going to be, uh, made with an add-on that, uh, Curtis Holt just released, uh, it's a free add-on, uh, definitely go check him out if you haven't already, uh, he's a really good artist, uh, makes a lot of cool stuff, uh, but, uh, we're going to be making this, and, uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram, uh, this is where I have it posted, um, you guys can see some of my stuff on here, uh, follow it if you want to. Um, but yeah, so here's how we're going to make this. Okay. So first off, uh, if you haven't already open a new file, um, and our first step is going to be downloading the add on. So, um, if you don't know how to download custom add ons, uh, then you basically just, well, this is a guide to get the add on. You just go to this website right here. I'll leave it in the, link in the description. Uh, make sure to uh, check out uh, Curtis Holt's video on this. Um, he explains it and what uh, everything can actually do. Uh, I'm just going to very briefly go over it. But uh, yeah, make sure uh, to go to him. Uh, he's, he's really cool. Uh, the video is right here on this page. So if you just don't want to go to his channel, you can just do this. But uh, this is uh, the website. And uh, you'll just go down here. It says name a fair price. Uh, you can type in zero if you want it for free. But if you want to support him, then you can type in... Uh, a certain amount of money uh it's in euros so uh make sure that you like convert it so you don't wind up paying like more or less than you actually want to pay but uh what you do is you would like type in zero or however much you want to pay uh, and then you purchase it and then you type in your email hit get and then um you'll be able to go to the files and then download the file so uh once you have the file downloaded what you'll be able to do is in blender if you go up here to edit and then go down to, uh preferences and once you have this preferences window up, once it loads, once you have this preference window up, if you click this install button, and I believe I have it in my downloads, and yeah, it's right here, and you just click on the zip file, install add-on from file, and then once you have it, you'll have uh, this menu, just click check and save preferences, or for some reason you just want it for this project and nothing else, you don't have to save preferences, but uh, yeah, that's it. Um, it's it for installing it's really simple so uh just going over it uh right now if i just delete this default key real quick and then delete this light uh if you click n on your keyboard you bring up this uh properties panel and you see once you install the add-on there's this new uh tab called by gen it has all these settings uh generator uh clay blob hard surface skin hard surface fatter faceting uh for this we're going to use hard surface faceting uh the uh settings are going to be the same you can also change displacement uh textures so if you want it to be like a different kind of displacement then you can choose that uh you can change decimate angle and dec uh, decimate collapse and then uh if we just have these settings and we click generate mesh it'll generate us this uh already faceted uh cool looking like blob but we're not going to use that we're not uh we're actually going to be using this menu so uh what i have is i have a human mesh and if I just import this human mesh in, uh, it's already rigged and everything. But uh, if I have this human mesh right here, and then I go up here to armature, I'll leave this. I'll leave this in the description below if you guys want to download this too. But if you already have a character, it's basically the same thing. Topology differences might occur, but other than that, it'll be all right. So uh, just all this like group one. If it's in on your armature, just go to the actual mesh and unlink it from the armature. Oops, it's already unlinked for me. Uh, and then you can just delete the armature and then for me it's going to be rx90 to rotate it rx90 uh to rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis so now that we have this um for this render uh, i just want like his like bust in the render so i don't want like any of his body so the way i do that is uh first i'm going to go up here to this little transparent button and click this so we can see through it and if I go hit tab on my keyboard and go into edit mode, uh, we can see that everything's selected. We don't want everything selected. So if we double tap A in Blender 2.8 or just A in Blender 2.79 below, uh, now we have all of this unselected. So if we click B on our keyboard, we have go into box select mode. And this little line on the top uh, will show like what you're selecting. So if I just have him, uh, if I just have this line, I might bring it down a little bit more and just select everything. And then if I box select again, if I don't get everything, uh, you don't have to hit shift or anything. It automatically just applies it. And I hit delete on my keyboard and delete the vertices. We can see that we're now left with uh, the 
like busts of the character. Mm -hmm. So you can go ahead and disable this transparent when I can need it anymore. So uh, here's where the fun part begins. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift D, uh, like hold shift and click D, and then to duplicate this like character head. I'm gonna hit G and just move them off to the side. Um, and then I'm gonna tab in edit mode again and with transparent on. I lied. We're gonna need it again. But uh, not after this. So once I have this, uh, I can go ahead and click B again and then just get as close to the head without getting any of the head selected as possible and just do the same thing, delete and vertices. Um, this is going to be going under the uh, original head as an emission with a uh, shader. Uh, so you can see that like rainbow look. So uh, here's the way that we actually um, kind of get that fast look. So with this Bygen menu still open, if you don't have it again, that's if you press N, uh, closes or opens it, you just go to this Bygen tab. We're going to be using this modify instead of generation. So uh, with all the settings left alone, if we click this and then click apply style, we can see that it instantly gives us this really cool faceted look. And uh, you can change any of these uh, settings to give different facets, uh, different like facets and stuff. Uh, also, if you uh, if your mesh is too high poly, I've noticed that it can have issues. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why it does it, but like it'll have like facets and smooth areas and stuff, and it's really weird. But um, if you look, you can see that these uh, like faces are separated from each other, which lets us, if we had an emission shader or an emission material under it, then uh, you'd be able to see through it, which is exactly what I did. Uh, so I had this head, right? Um, and basically what I did is I just moved it over here and I just fit it inside of uh, this other. So if I go in a wireframe view and I just move it in and I'm gonna shrink it down. Oops, everything S shrink it down oh also what I'm gonna do for this if you want to click F3 and then type in origin and then object set origin origin to geometry so uh, that just uh, sets the origin point so it won't like scale down here uh, like it just did but if I just make sure that it's not like going through anywhere and just give it a little bit like this uh, just make sure that it's inside of it all the way and you can go into solid view to make sure that nothing's poking out. Um, not really. You have this like face right here. You can just go into edit mode and face select, and then like delete the faces that are out. And then you go over here, just like these, and delete them. And the reason I'm doing this is because uh, with the emission shader, I don't want like any emission coming out uh, that it shouldn't be. So I'm gonna scale it up just a tiny bit. Okay, so now that we have this, I'm gonna go ahead and hide this. Uh, no, actually, I'm not. So I'm gonna give it that uh, kind of rainbow uh, look. So uh, here's how we're gonna do that, okay? So I don't think I uploaded this video, but uh, I haven't uploaded it yet, but I'm gonna upload it soon. Uh, but there's this uh, material I found, um, and it's an iridescent material, which means it like shines weird and light and stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to apply that material, but give it an emission shader instead of a principal shader. So, uh, if I click new material, make sure the uh, second head is selected. And then we come down here and delete this principal shader and add an emission shader. And then we just put this in a surface and uh, also switch uh, render engine to cycles. Uh, I'm just going to change mine to GPU so it doesn't kill my computer. Um, so... I'm going to change the background color in this little world icon to black just so we don't have any outside light interfering with it. So if we look at it right now, we can see that we already have that like cracking effect uh, going on because that's exactly like what happens. Um, I'm going to change the emission strength to 5 and we can see that it's a lot brighter and more intense now. You could leave it like this uh, and this looks cool by itself, but I like it just a little bit more with that like, kind of rainbow effect. So here's how we're going to do that. So if you shift A and add a layer weight, and then we add a color ramp, and then we add a hue saturation node. That's all that we're gonna need. So if I take the layer weight and put facing into the back of the color ramp, and change this color ramp over here where it says RGB, change it to HSL and near to far. And now if we click on this little black flag right here, and we change it all the way bright and change it to purple, 
and then we come over here this white one uh, make sure white selected it'll be white down here and do the exact same thing it's already white so we just change it to purple and now we have this rainbow effect so if we plug this into the color on the hue saturation value and plug the color on the hue saturation into the color on the emission shader we should see that yes it works it has uh, the rainbow effect on it which is exactly what we want uh, so that's that uh, yeah that's uh that's the rainbow shader uh, if you want to see what it looks like without it and this is what it looks like uh, it's a little bit weird without it on there but uh, it looks cool with uh, the cracks and everything like I said you don't have to do this step but if you want to uh, he like disconnected this and just it's just white or just standard color then you can do that but I like it just a little bit better with this rainbow shader so now we're gonna set up the lighting okay so here's what I did for this uh, like always in all my renders I added a plane I'm just gonna turn the overlays back on and just brought it up like this scaled it up and then hit tab and make sure you're on edge select right here and then select this edge back here hit E bring it up and then middle mouse click oops E bring it up middle mouse click E bring it up middle mouse click there we go uh, and then just extrude it up and then we select this edge and hit control B it bevels it so now uh, we just have this like one edge so if we use our scroll wheel and just scroll up we add more edges and there's about good and then right click on it and click shade smooth so we don't have any of those like, edges so uh, now we have this and I'm probably gonna scale it up a little bit more maybe like that yeah it's about good so now if we uh, look at this we can see that uh, it's white and we don't want this uh, to be white so if we take this and we go to material give it a new material and just turn the base color to black and then we turn the roughness all the way up we can see that it gets rid of that so if I bring this down a little bit more um, the reason I'm just adding this background and not just uh, making it black since the world color already is black is just because uh, when you add lights when I add the lights later um, this will be a little bit illuminated and it's like so will all this behind it so it gives it, like more detail like it's like actually in a place instead of just floating through space so here's what I'm gonna do with the lighting okay so lighting is a really essential part of like any art piece or render or anything so um, what I did with this is if we go back here we can see that here it's illuminated up here and stuff and there's like a light coming from here so here's what I did okay so oops so uh, right now you could theoretically leave it like this but I wanted to give it like more detail like it's a human form so here's what I did I added a area lamp, brought it up, put it behind him, like over here, and then just rotated it to where it's facing kind of like the back of his neck area. Then I'm just gonna move it over here. Um, I changed the size to what was it, three, four, five, maybe? No, nah, I think it was like three. Yeah, so change the size to about three. Uh, I made the color slightly blue be like not a lot blue at all like that um, and that kind of gives it like detail like it's like an actual human and then you can change the strength to maybe like mm -hmm. eh, kind of like that um, and then you have this uh, to where it's uh, giving it like emphasis on the back and then like it's actually there and then what I did is I added a point light and then I just brought it up. Turn over those on so we can see it. I just brought it up to right above its head. His head. And I also gave that a slight blue color. So if we look at that now, and then I ch mm, let me make it a little, a little blue. Mm, like that. And I changed the strength to a little less. We can see that now we have um, some lighting going on, and like it looks looks really cool uh, and everything. We have this like fracture going on and stuff. We have uh, the lighting coming from above to give it emphasis on the head. We have lighting coming from behind to give it that rim light. And I think it looks cool. Uh, you can always adjust the lighting settings if you want. Uh, this is just what I chose. Um, and um, you can always make better lighting. Lighting isn't like anything objective. Lighting is always subjective. Um, 
with this you can have like any sort that you want like you might like want like lighting coming from like over here or over here just once uh, but that's what I did uh, that's what I chose to go for and hopefully this tutorial taught you something uh, also render settings uh, what I do for my renders um, is you can see that like all my renders are like square except for a few like down here like this one's not square and this one's not square but most of them are square um, the way I do that is uh, if we have if we're looking at our uh, render straightforward and we hit control alt and zero on our keyboard we get our camera view uh, where we're looking at and then uh, oops. if uh, I go over here to this like little like printer thing um, and we change uh, the resolution X to 1080 um, so now it, they're both the same if they're both the same it's always gonna be square it doesn't have to be 1080 by 1080 if you want it to be like 4096 by 4096, if you want like a really high quality, uh, kind of like, or high resolution render, then you can always do that. I'm also just gonna move my camera a little bit over, like that. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my camera, come down here to this little camera panel, and change the focal length to hmm, something like that. Um, yeah, it's way too. I think 39. Yeah, something like that. So that looks good. Um, I think that looks good. And then uh, samples. Um, samples, I gave mine 500. Um, and for this render, I'm not exactly sure why, but you lost a little bit of detail right here. But uh, that can be fixed. So uh, this is uh, the render. Um, also, you gotta use both of these. Um, I use this uh, denoise add-on. Uh, you can just look it up and download it, just like I showed you at the beginning of the video. But a uh, blender denoiser. Uh, the reason I don't use the reason I didn't use a blender denoiser is I've noticed that it lost a ton of detail over in the shadows. Uh, so I just use this uh, denoise AI denoiser. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description for that if you guys want to download it. But uh, I just check that on, and then if you click F12, you'll start rendering it. Oh, also, um, a lot of people don't know this. Once it stops running, all right. So a lot of people don't know this, but uh, if you're rendering on a dedicated GPU, uh, a lot of people get slow render times, uh, even though they're using on GPU. So the way to fix that is if you go to performance, and uh, normally the tiles are on 64 by 64 or something really low. Uh, that's good for CPU rendering because CPUs have like all different cores and they're rendering all at different times. But for a GPU, you normally only have like one or two cores, so it's better to have a bigger tile size and a lower tile size on GPU. Uh, so just tiles X and tiles Y, just put it on 256 by 256, and then you'll uh, get faster render times. So uh, once this renders fully, I'll show you guys a completed render, and I'll be right back. So uh, this is the final render um, with the denoise and everything on it. Uh, you can see that we did lose a tiny bit of detail right here, but uh, that's not really noticeable uh, on Instagram anyway. Uh, you could always like um, up the samples and everything if you want like a crystal clear render, but uh, this is good enough. Um, without the noise, we can see that over here we had a ton of noise and stuff. Um, so obviously a lot worse than this. Uh, so uh, if you have a brighter scene, that uh, that won't happen. But uh, yeah, so. Uh, this is the final render. I personally think it's a lot better than the other render I did, so I'm probably just going to delete that one and then repost this one. Um, but let me know if you learned something, guys. Uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram. Uh, that's right here. Um, Viz.uao, then underscore, because I'm fancy like that, uh, to see all my artwork and stuff. Uh, so, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to check out Curtis Holt. He's the creator of this add-on. Really useful. Uh, you can make a ton of stuff with it. Uh, make sure to check out his video right here uh, on it. So, uh... Thanks guys for watching. I uh, hope you learned something. So, oh, also one more thing. I also have a Discord. Uh, if you guys want to uh, join my Discord, oops. Um, I have this Discord right here. Uh, if you guys want to join it, then uh, feel free to. Uh, you can just talk, uh, ask about art and stuff, blender help. I'll try to help you when I want. But uh, yeah. Uh, thanks guys so much for watching. Hope you learned something. My name is Viz. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.